This is a favorite area in my kitchen garden right here because when the plants grow in the shade, a lot of times they have a better flavor, they don't get burnt up by the sun and you get a better, um, you know, more succulent plant. There's a lot of things growing right in here that we can use. One of the most common probably is this right over here, which is a, a, chin, a, a kinopodium, Joe tells me I pronounced that wrong, but goosefoot is another um, name for it. And this is a really good plant just for salads. You can make a really good like stew out of it with um, garlic and, and uh, I put olive oil in it and then they stew up just like spinach greens. You know, and they're really good that way, some of these. And when you look for these plants, the younger the plant, the better off they are. So you want to look for the young plants that are probably just coming out. And there's these things. You can look at the shape of the leaves on these, and they look like a goose foot. So they're pretty easy to identify. A few of them. And, and if you, you could see right in here, the birds have been over here a lot. So we probably want to get some that bird, bird bird droppings. Right, there's bird droppings. The, those are not part of the uh, actual plant. They're bird droppings. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to make sure when you're gathering, you gather some that don't have bird droppings on them. Yes. Um, this right. plant over here is a smaller plantain plant. And this is smaller, so I'm going to gather some of these. And the plantain plant is, has medicinal value as well as food value. It's high in a lot of different vitamins. And um, it's also used as a poultice where you can crush it up in your teeth, just like this. And then when the juices start coming out, you would put it on a cut. In fact, I have a cut right here yesterday from butchering. and You can stick it right on that cut right there, and it draws out any um, bacteria or anything like that and helps it heal. But it's also a good salad herb, and so we're going to pick some of those too. The smaller the leaves, always the better. The bigger leaves are okay. Here's one right here that's good. But um, they're sometimes tougher and not always as, a little bit more chewy. And so we want to gather these smaller ones in here. And since we're going to be using this for our stew that we're making in the stomach later and we're going to be using it for a green salad, we can gather quite a bit of that. And so Plantain also has um, seeds in the fall that are good to eat and you can use them to make a, a flour or a cereal gruel with. And usually I like to roast most of my wild seeds first and then I'll soak them and cook them up into a gruel, you know, for breakfast or use them for a flour and grind them. Hi, little buddy. This plant grown over here is a dock plant and these are really useful. They're good for the liver. They have medicinal value um, in that way. And they are also good food. And we usually use the leaves and the leaves are a little bit better before they go to seed. The seeds on them are also edible in the fall and the stalks and the seeds turn bright red. And usually I take those off and do the same thing with them. I can um, gather them and then winnow them and then um, dry them and make them into a gruel or a flower or something like that. But the dock is a really useful plant. And so I'm gonna actually take some of these dock leaves and I might use it to wrap my fish in later. Some of the bigger leaves are not very tasty if you're gonna eat them, but um, very good for wrapping a fish in or something else that you might want to mud up and cook in the coals. So I'm gonna pull some of those leaves off of there. So when you can find a good spot in the shade with the smaller plants growing like this, especially in the early spring, that's when they first start coming up, that's really yeah, the best time. Dried. They're, they're okay dried. You can dry any of these and store them. You know, I have do dock dried. And the dock root, you can also use the um, dock root. This plant that I found right over here is a nettles plant. A lot of people are afraid of nettles because it will give you a sting if you touch it. The leaves are coated with a skin irritant that um, will make your skin bubble up into a little rash. Now, some people have said that if you grab the underside of the leaves and crush them, you won't be stung as bad. But I know for sure that if I use a dock leaf to pick these, that I won't get stung for sure because dock is an antidote to the sting of the nettles. Nettles is a really good plant because it's good in, um, it has a lot of vitamins in it and it makes a really good tea. It's a good for the urinary tract and it has a lot of good qualities to it. We also use the plant stalk after it dies in the, in the fall, we use it for a fiber and it makes a fairly strong fiber. So if I was to take this dock leaf and use it to gather the nettles, I wouldn't get stung. And then I could use the nettles for tea and I'm just gonna... You just pull them off leaf by leaf? Just pull them off leaf by leaf like that. Okay. And you know, it's 
you can just we can just grab a stalk of it and then uh, and then pull the leaves bring off it back, back to camp and camp, pull it yeah. off back at the camp yeah great except it's really fibery so I'm probably gonna have to cut it no okay this is some wild mint right here and one of the characteristics of mint of the mint family is the square stem and if you look really closely you can see the stem is square and you could smell it already, can't you? Oh yeah, it smells yeah, it like spearmint. It smells spearmint. really good. And we're going to gather some of these and um, put them in our tea. So, do you smell that? It smells good, doesn't it? Yeah. You think something smells bad? Yeah. Maybe it's the swamp. It might be. Even though the swamp smells bad, the swamp is a wonderful place. Do you know why? Because there's a lot of good things to eat in the swamp. And the swamp provides a lot of food for different animals. This is where the food chain starts. you know what the food chain is? No? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, huh? No. The yeah. food chain starts in the cattail patch. And look over there. If you look in the cattail patch, you could see birds. See birds right there? There's a black bird right over there. And there's little critters that go in and out of the cattail. See the bird right up there? This is the pot scrubber. Great. And that's what we're going to be scrubbing our pots with later today when we're done when we're done eating. Right. Very good. Okay. This is the pot scrubber that Chris had um, picked up over there. And we use this to scrub out our pots when we're done cooking, and we'll probably be using that today. But this is a type of horsetail, and you can see the different sections in here, just like a, the horsetail that's probably a little more common. Um, there's several different types of horsetail, and they're very high in silica, although we don't consider them an edible where we don't cook them and use them for food quite a bit, but they're very high in silica and other vitamins, and some people will use these medicinally. But we're gonna just use them to scrub our pots today. Okay, here we are in the cattail patch, and this is my favorite place to go for food because there's so much food around the cattail patch, not only for us, but for all the little critters that come around here to, to get food. This is where the food chain starts, and there's a lot of different animals and insects and things in here. But the cattail is edible four seasons out of the year. And at this time of year, we have several different ways that we can prepare and eat cattail. And I'll pick up. Okay, we'll get that. And let me grab a root here. It's quite a good piece of root stock on this one. So this is a cattail plant that I just pulled up out of the swamp here. And these roots here are edible four seasons out of the year. And I use these roots in soups and stews, and I could also make a flower out of them. And what I do is clean them off really well and peel them, which we'll be doing later. And we'll take the inner, which is a white, um, you could see a little bit of it right here right now, a white fibrous material. And it has a lot of um, carbohydrate in here. And you can see if I rub my finger along it, you can see what I gather up on my finger there, all mm -hmm. that type of material and yeah. this right here is what we would use for um, flowers oh. and we would take it usually if I'm going to make flour out of it, I take it and I dry it and I pound it. Uh, I had read some people who had taken this inner part and soaking it and then the fiber the fibrous part will separate from the carbohydrate and the fibrous part will go to the bottom of the bowl and then they pour off the water and remove the fiber and they have a lot of this um, carbohydrate that they can use for however they would like to use it. Sometimes what they would do is take it and uh, pour off the water and it would still be all kinds of wet, like a wet flour, and then they could add their other ingredients right to that and make their favorite bread or whatever it was that they would want to make. So, but today what we're going to do is we're going to peel these roots and we're going to cut them, we're going to put them in our stew. This cattail that I just pulled out of the swamp right now, I pulled it off where it connects to the rootstock right here, and usually in the spring these are really good, and they're good throughout most of the late spring and summer too, as long as you see the smaller cattails grow and you want to catch them before they get too tall, probably about two feet is about all you want them to grow to have the real tender parts. And these are edible, you just pull open the outer leaf right here. Actually the whole thing is edible but they start to get really fibery as you go up here and most people um, really like the inner core which is right in the center here. So I usually peel those outer leaves off and have a taste of that. So Sarah, do you want to have a taste of that? Yeah. Yeah. Tell us how it is. Good. Is it good? Yeah. Well, you can good, eat that huh? whole one if you want. Cool. The 
the mucus on here on this part of the leaf right here that we peel off. When you peel it off, you're going to notice it has kind of a mucilage type um, substance right in here, and that has medicinal value. That almost works like an aloe plant, and we've used it on cuts and bruises and different things like that. Sunburn works really good on sunburn. We could put some on Jesse. Yeah, poor baby. And it feels like aloe if you feel it. It smells good, Jesse. So, and it works it. pretty well. That's great. Oh, dang. Really? As the cattail continues to grow, you know, mommy? the male and female part are encased in this. Let me see, this one might be a little bit bigger. Baby. Well, this one's good. Are encased in the leaves like, like this. And usually, what we do at this time of year is we pluck them off right below that leaf right there and um, just cut them. So we just have this piece here. It's kind of like a cigar shaped piece and it's covered in the leaves. And if we put this in the coals of the fire and cook it for about 20 minutes and then peel it, it we call it cat on the cob. And it doesn't taste exactly like what? corn, but it's really good with butter and salt. You want to and this plant over here, well, this one has a pretty good cat on the cob right in here that we'll be able to get. Yeah. And this plant right here. It's starting to open up, as you can see on this plant. Let me move the leaf so you can see it. Yep. And you can see the yellow pollen starting to form on the top. And this pollen makes a really good flower. And it's really high in protein, so I like to add cattail pollen to a lot of the things I cook because it ups the protein value of it and makes it a lot more nutritious, especially if you have kids that like to eat bread, a lot of bread. And you can see if I move this around, you see the pollen? I can put it in my hand, you can see the yellow cattail pollen. And what I'll do is gather a bunch of these and then I'll shake it either in a bowl or, a, or something or even in a bag. You can put it in a plastic bag and if you shake it the pollen will come out like that and you'll be able to gather a lot of that. And it makes your food a brilliant yellow. It makes it really good looking and appetizing and it's very nutritious also. Now that we have everything from our kitchen garden we go back to the kitchen.